you talk about Piotr Jan, look at how he knocked out um, Uriah, beat up Jose Aldo. Like he's he's beat the out of some people. He's he's a bad man. He's a dangerous dude. Piotr No Mercy Jan. He is currently one of the best Russian fighters in mixed martial arts. Very soon, Piotr will go into the octagon once again to prove that the title of one of the best representatives of the UFC's bantamweight division is earned for a reason. UFC 280 will be held in Abu Dhabi on October the 22nd, at which the Russian fighter will clash with a highly promising American prospect, Sean O'Malley. Their fight will most likely identify the next title contender in the major organization. As we wait for this event to take place, today we are going to talk about Piotr Jan's sports career. Dear friends, don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Childhood and Youth Piotr Jan was born on February 2nd in 1993 in Nazarovsky district village of Krasnoyarsky region. Closer to the 2000s, the boy moved with his family to the polar city called Dadinka. For the most part, his childhood years were light-hearted. But because of the boy's hot temper combined with an active lifestyle, Piotr always got into troubles which often resulted in brawls. Such behaviour was especially the case in school which forced teachers to call his parents and have explanatory sessions. At one moment, Mad Cap's parents decided to stir his energy in the right direction and sent him to a sports section. The first official martial art in Piotr Jan's life was Taekwondo. Oddly enough, the boy really liked training from the very first session in the gym. Very soon, he would spend his whole free time exactly there, completely forgetting about conflicts and brawls. Piotr is not the only athlete in the family. His older brother was really into boxing at a younger age. There were moments when his younger brother asked to go together with him, but for some reason got a rejection. As a result, on one of those days, Piotr waited for his brother to leave the house and went after him. As he followed him straight to the gym, the boy stated his desire to train in boxing. At the age of 12, Piotr Jan began to learn boxing under Nikolai Zuzikov's supervision. Since that moment and for the next eight years, the guy would do only this sport, showing great results. By the age of 14, the teenager began to discharge cargoes at Yenisei as a part-time job, where at one moment he got to know Konstantin Mankov, as he later learned more about the guy and acknowledged the boxing talent with his own eyes, he linked him up with a future coach, USSR master of sports, Yuri Demchenko. A year later, the athlete moved to Omsk, where he continued to train with doubled effort and work as a guard. By 20, Piotr Jan passed mandatory specifications and became the master of sport. Mixed Martial Arts Piotr Jan's career transition from regular boxing to mixed martial arts was rather spontaneous. He was once offered to compete at one of the regional MMA tournaments. The offer was financially appealing, 20,000 rubles. Considering that Piotr didn't make any money on boxing, he gladly accepted it. The first opponent in the merciless's professional career was another debutant Russian fighter, Murad Bakiev. Before his fight with Jan, Bakiev built up a good foundation in Sambo and became the champion of Asia. This fight took place at December the 20th in 2013 at Eurasian Fighting Championship Battle of the Bakao. For Jan as a boxer, the fight with such a high-level wrestler was quite tough. Bakiev was winning the first two rounds due to his takedowns and control. But in the third one, Piotr managed to snatch the initiative thanks to decent corner advice. Right hook landed on the chin, which instantly dropped Bakiev. After a symbolic follow-up, Piotr earned his first professional career win via knockout. Merciless had his next fight on February the 26th of 2014, his opponent was Arthur Merzakanyan. The fight began at a high pace. A minute later, as Jan measured the right distance, he sent his opponent to a heavy knockdown, opening a small cut on his face. It was followed by an immediate finish attempt, but Arthur was still capable of defending intelligently. 
In this fight, Piotr Jan showed progress in his ground game compared to the previous bout. Soon, the referee stood the fighters up. After that, Jan began to land more often which made Mazakanyan go for the takedown attempt. Moreover, it was followed by an armbar, but Piotr showed a great defense and got in the top position once again. Another combination made the referee stop this beating. Thus, Merciless earned his second career win via TKO. By that moment, Piotr was already fully committed to mixed martial arts. He won the Russian Championship and became the country's cup prizeman. The Russians' next fight will only happen a year later. In February of 2015, the Merciless accepted the offer to compete at a young organization's Grand Prix, ACB. His debut opponent with the new walls was a more experienced Brazilian fighter, Renato Velami, with a record of 19 wins and 7 losses. Fighters spent most of the fight in the stand-up. By the time of his third fight, Jan worked on his wrestling even more, which resulted in a brilliant takedown defense in the first round. The Brazilian had two successful takedown attempts in the second round, but Velami couldn't hold him there for too long. The third round was similar to the first two five-minute rounds. Jan would only get in danger at the very end as he gave his back to the opponent. But again, the Brazilian fighter couldn't fully lock the choke. As a result, Jan got a third professional win via unanimous decision in the quarterfinals. Grand Prix semi-finals took place three months later, where Merciless was up against the young countryman and the master of sports in free wrestling, Haron Ozumiev. The clash was over in the very beginning of the first round. Piotr needed only 40 seconds to execute a guillotine and completely cut out his oxygen. It was just his fourth professional fight and Jan managed to finish wrestling masters of sports at their field. A true talent. The finals were held five months later in October at ACB 27. A young fighter was up against Murad Kalamov. The fight went the whole distance. The Siberian pressured his opponent throughout the entire three rounds. There wasn't even a second when Kalamov could catch a break and breathe. Constant pressure and precise shots often made him take the fight to the ground. But despite successful minutes of control time, Piotr still managed to get up and move forward even more aggressively. That happened a couple of times. Jan exploded just in time and made his opponent back up. As a result, it led to a decisive unanimous decision win. Merciless Russian extended his winning streak and won the Bantamweight Grand Prix. This win led Piotr Jan to a famous title fight against Magomed Magomedov. It happened on March the 26th of 2016 at ACB 32 and gave the fans an opportunity to be entertained with a true five-round war. 25 minutes of beautiful technique, high pace and an inexhaustible will to win led to judges wanting to score this spectacular fight as a draw. But considering one point that was taken away from Jan for an illegal head strike, the champion in Magomedov was awarded with the win. The head of the promotion, Merbek Haziev, shared everybody's infuriation and stated his desire to organize a rematch very soon, which eventually took 13 months due to the initial date being moved because of the Ramadan. The next fight of the Merciless was against the Brit and a former champion of a rather big Western promotion, BMMA, Ed Arthur. At the time of his fight with Jan, his record consisted of seven wins and one loss. The fight was scheduled for July 15th at ACB 41. Despite a hand injury that the Russians suffered at the very beginning, it didn't stop him from dominating the fight for the whole given time. For the entire three rounds, Piotr once again showed a rather good ground game, apart from an immaculate boxing technique and in one of the sequences, he even executed a hip toss against his opponent. As a result, Piotr Jan earned his sixth professional win via unanimous decision. The rematch with Magomedov happened only in April of 2017. First, as we talked about earlier, the fight was rescheduled because of Ramadan. 
and after that the fight couldn't be held in autumn or winter because of the Siberian's broken hand. During that time, by the spring of the next year, Magomedov managed to have one successful title defense. The long-awaited fight was targeted for ACB 57. Jan didn't leave any doubts in the rematch. He put in proper and skillful work, trying to do his best in every sequence. Now he had a perfect defense against every takedown attempt. And what was more surprising, he threw his opponent on numerous occasions himself. In the conclusion of five dominant rounds, Merciless took the rematch and snatched the ACB bantamweight title. Piotr Jan's last fight under the organization's contract took place in September at ACB 71. His opponent was the Brazilian fighter with a record of 12 wins and one loss, Mateus Matos, who at this time already tried to debut in the UFC. Jan tore his cruciate ligaments prior to the fight but didn't want to pull out. Not long ago before his walkout, he tightly bandaged his leg but the athlete commission couldn't allow him to go out like that referring to the current taping rules. Merciless was rather cautious in that fight, but despite that, he still put in pressure and smashed his opponent's face. During three rounds of the fight, he knocked the Brazilian down a couple of times. And in the middle of the third one, he finished him with one of the combinations in an aggressive manner. Path to the U every Piotr strike and made it to a decision. Uh, I think that uh, the fight uh, should have ended really earlier, uh, but still uh, the, uh, everything was uh, pretty okay. Um, I hope uh, that uh, in the future uh, we'll have more uh, cool fights. At the end of the year, at UFC 232, the fight between Piotr and Douglas Andrade was finally put together. At the time of their fight, the Brazilian was in the top 15 of the bantamweight division, occupying the 14th spot. I don't want to say anything about my opponent, I don't want to say anything bad or good. I'm here to win, I'm here to fight people. Just don't get too hyped too soon, but everything goes according to plan and I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. Merciless was beating the poor Brazilian up through two rounds. 
strikes landed from every possible angle. As a result, seeing that Douglas is drowning in blood and can't have an answer for Jan, the fighter's corner decided to surrender. Thus, Jan won his third UFC fight since the beginning of summer. Glad I won. I knew like, uh, like I could beat this guy. All I need to like uh, make, him, make him tired. And then I, when I made him, made him tired, I finished him. After two months of Jan's unsuccessful attempts to call out a number six ranked fighter in John Lenica, the next opponent happened to be another well-known fighter who was also in the top 10 of the division, John Dodson. If everything goes well, I will finish the fight, I will come closer to him, find his job and knock him out. Well, he's done well making sure everybody looks pretty much normal against him or even a little bit slower, but how is he going to get it? Somebody who's a better veteran, who's faster, throws, uh, has higher volume of punches, and we'll going to see how well he does with my power against him. I say I can knock him out, I just need time to do it, you know, step by step, you know, get closer to him, and yeah, I hope to knock him out. Yeah. The fight was one-sided for the most part, if not counting one precise shot from Dodson in the second round that knocked Piotr down for the first time in his career, Merciless outstruck his opponent and won by unanimous decision. Thank you very much, I feel very good and I'm glad I'm climbing up the rankings. I can say how far I am, next I want Jimmy Rivera top 6 and then we'll see after that. As he wanted so, the Russian fighter got to face the American Jimmy Rivera next. At the moment this fight was organized, it became known that the champion in TJ Dillashaw was disqualified and suspended for an uncertain period of time. This circumstance was a perfect opportunity for Jan to get on the radar. So in the future only big fights, you know, and Russia wants one more champion. He's a, good, he's a good fighter, he's a tough fighter. I just uh, way more experience and way better and I have to go out there and prove it and show it. I mean, my last performance, like I said, I didn't show up for it and I wasn't the Jimmy Rivera that you used to seeing out there and fight. So with his next fight coming up Saturday night, you know, I did a lot of mental preparation, I think a lot more, putting him, you know, my primary focus, stepping back from everything else I do in my life and just focus on that and focus on getting the win Saturday night. UFC 238 was Piotr first tournament where he fought on the main card. His clash with Rivera was very similar to the Siberian's previous fight with Dodson. Jan was outstriking his opponents throughout three rounds, scored a couple of knockdowns and once again earned another unanimous decision win. He can say whatever he wants, just like me, but at the, at, the, at the end of the day, the UFC will make the shit decision. If they want me to fight for the, for the title, I'm ready. After this win, Piotr moved up to a fourth spot in the ratings, but the contender fight had to be postponed. The Russian decided to heal his elbow injury, which bothered him for a long time. He called out Marlon Moraes, but didn't get a response. However, the call was answered by a legendary Uriah Faber, who was ranked number 12. By December of 2019, both were ready to fight and show the best they had in UFC 245. I don't think he's a legend of the sport. Uh, of course, he's an old and experienced fighter, but for me, the definition of legend is something different. Um, and then, you know, I keep my eye on the guys, and, and he's got a, uh, a good skill set. I know, uh, I think he's an Olympic level boxer as an amateur, is what, what, what he says, or, what, you know, they call it master of sport over in Russia. And, uh, and he's been. Trying to, trying to do this mixed martial arts thing for about five years since he was a young guy, and he's, he's well-rounded, so. This time, the fight happened to be even more one-sided. Merciless did not leave any chances for the Californian veteran and finished the fight already in the beginning of the third round. After a couple of knockdowns, it was painful to watch Uriah, but after the leg strike from the clinch, he got completely shut down. Thus, Piotrian won his sixth UFC fight in a row. What do you guys think? Do I deserve to fight for the title or not? I had a six wins inside a year and a half. You know, I think I deserve it. After his win over Faber, Piotrian was supposed to headline one of the upcoming UFC tournaments in Kazakhstan. But the pandemic messed all the plans up. It was followed by Henry Cejudo's sudden retirement, who was the champion. In these circumstances, the promotion announced a fight for the vacant title. Jose Aldo and Piotrian were the main contenders the latter having the longest winning streak in this weight class. 
The clash happened in July of 2020 at UFC 251. I'm very fast, you know, two years ago I signed to UFC and now I'm fighting for the title. And uh, it's, it's, good, it's good to kind of look back at this journey and uh, everything happened for a reason and I'm ready, I'm ready to be a champion this weekend. Yeah, I knew him because he had been training in Brazil, so I knew what his fighting style was like, I'd watch his fights, so I knew who he was. If it's up to me, it's it's gonna be a lot of back and forth, you know, like I've been saying, nobody's watching my training, nobody knows what I've done this camp. It was my best camp, my speed, my power, everything. So if it's not fight of the night, it's gonna be knockout of the night. The title fight was really dynamic and spectacular. Each strike from both fighters was supported by the unbreakable self-belief and an infinite will to win. Things were going that way up until the middle of the final round. Only at the end could the merciless crush the Brazilian monster and get the win by a TKO. And that'll do it! Piotr Jan is an undisputed world champion at... If we don't count Oleg Tektarov, Piotr Jan is the second Russian champion of the mixed martial arts modern era, who earned the title in the world's best league after Habib Nurmagomedov. I'm insanely happy to win this belt in such uh, difficult times and it was uh, my long-term goal. Everything went excellent. We knew it's going to be a tough fight, but I had, I had everything perfect. As he reached the very top, Merciless was supposed to face the number one contender in Aljamain Sterling. Initially, the fight was announced for UFC 256, but due to some problems on Piotr's side, it had to be rescheduled. It finally happened in March 2021 and was the third title fight of the UFC 259 card. He's a tough opponent. I know he knows I'm a, I'm a huge threat and I can finish the fight um, relatively easy. If I you know get him down, that that's could be a really quick night. I can outpoint him. Uh, definitely, I see his way of winning is just he needs a, he needs a finish. I, I can't really see how, and it has to be him catching me, type of thing. And I I think I'm pretty elusive, man. I'm pretty hard to hit in there. So yes, of course, I need to beat number one contender to prove everyone. I don't have any conflict with him, I just want to beat his curly head off. Jan completely dominated this fight. He knocked down his opponent and executed takedowns with no issues. But it was all over in the fourth round in a rather controversial and unexpected manner. The Russian lost his bantamweight UFC championship because of the disqualification due to an illegal knee strike. You saw everything, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, before the fight, the referee was paying a lot of attention about the hand positions when the fighter is grounded or not. So I was just too focused on his hands and even forgot about his uh, uh, legs. So obviously I didn't, I didn't mean to do an illegal shot. Soon after that, the new champion was thrashed with the critique of his behavior after a so-called win and what happened after the fight. To this point and to have the fight go like that, I thought the fight was very close. I thought I was down two rounds. And it, that's not the way I wanted to win. That's not the way I envisioned this. The rematch was scheduled for the end of October, but Aljamain Sterling had to pull out due to a surgery on his neck as he needed the time to recover. Considering these circumstances, the fight between Merciless and Corey Sanhagen was organized with an interim title at stake. This fight was targeted at UFC 267. I see he do a lot of unnecessary movements and I see where I can catch him. I think he does a really good job defending himself and I, and I definitely think that he's a, he's a very powerful offensive threat. I think me and him are probably you know at the top of the list and as far as UFC guys goes for striking. Um, we just do it completely differently and I think that that's what makes this fight so exciting and you know I'm really pumped that everyone else is really excited about it too and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see whose style reigns supreme. The fight between Piotr Jan and Corey Sanhagen showed the MMA fans a true clash of styles. The fight was rather even in the first rounds, but the Russian completely took over the second half. He adapted to the opponent's style and won the championship rounds in a decisive manner, also knocking Corey down for the first time in his career. As a result, Piotr earned the UFC belt for the second time by unanimous decision and came out right at Sterling. He's a good guy, good fighter. As you noticed before the fight, we didn't talk trash to each other. Respect was mutual, you know, and uh, um, I respect him as a human being, as a fighter.
The long-awaited rematch between Merciless and the champion in Aljamain Sterling happened on April the 9th of this year. There were a lot of words said. It took fans a year to enjoy the payback for Aljo's provocative behavior. But was it a payback? I think I won this fight and I got dropped. The second fight between these two caused a lot of critique towards both the judges and the legitimate champion. Because the first round happened to be quite even, Sterling won the second round and the third as he did his homework. Jan definitely won the last rounds. But one can't change what happened. Aljamain remained the champion and Jan suffered a bitter defeat. Truly blessed to be back here. I'm just glad I came out on the right side of that decision. I don't know what the heck that one judge was thinking. but um. Currently, the Russian fighter is actively training for his fight with a promising young fighter in Sean O'Malley. Even before Sugar's fight with Pedro Munoz, Jan tweeted a short message stating his desire to fight Sean in case of a win. Hey pink doodle Sugar Sean, if you win on Saturday and really want to fight me, I dare you to call me out and I will accept it. But if you just want to make useless noise for hype, stop talking about me, coward. We know very well how this fight ended. The main thing is that the fight between Merciless and Sean was indeed organized. Despite the fact that O'Malley is ranked number 12 and Jan is number 1. And very soon we're going to witness a vivid fight dance from the two flashy strikers. I feel I'm very excited for this press conference. I'm excited to be around Peter because I do think that he thinks maybe he's going to intimidate me or that I am slightly scared or I'm even a little bit nervous for this fight. I can't wait to look into his eyes and him realize that not only am I ready, not only am I capable, but I, I'm just, this is my time. October 22nd, 2022, Sugar Show beats Peter Yan. That's just what's going to happen. I don't think, I don't want to react to him. And I don't think it's a fight that I'm supposed to hype or build up. I don't need it right now. Let him entertain the fans and build this fight up for the public. I will simply beat him up and that's it. Regardless of what anybody says, Piotr has all the cards on his hands to win this fight and go after the champion for the third time to finally end the debate of who is better and who is the rightful bantamweight king. We wish him luck in the upcoming fight. Three, two, three. Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah!